Alrighty, everybody, next topic is acid-base reactions. Um, these are essentially another type of uh, double replacement reaction. They sometimes can have some ver different variations and, and the like. Um, there are several different definitions of acids and bases. For the moment, we're predominantly going to go with what's called the Arrhenius definition, which is the production or presence of the hydrogen ion uh, when the compound is in water. And then for bases, the presence of the hydroxide ion. Um, and then you also have ammonia, which is an exception to that. It only qualifies under some other definitions, but it is a base. You do need to memorize. Memorize. Okay, the strong acids. There are uh, several of them, I guess basically seven. The hydrohalic acids other than HF. Okay, HF is not a strong acid. HCl, HBr, and HI. Nitric acid, to help you remember, HNO3. Chloric acid comes from the chlorate ion, so that's HClO3. Perchloric comes from the perchlorate ion, so that's HClO4. And sulfuric, H2SO4. Those are the strong acids. A couple of weak acids that you need to be familiar with are acetic acid, and carbonic acid. In terms of the bases, um, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, most of the time, most books will consider all group one and group two metals to be strong bases. But the issue comes into play when you take a look down here, a note regarding strength versus solubility. This is particularly uh, important in terms of the bases because some of the bases are not very soluble. Many of the hydroxides are not soluble, but the little bit that does dissolve will dissociate. So something could be only slightly soluble, but still be strong because it still dissociates. So let's look at our reactions. Um, Acid-base reactions are also called neutralization reactions uh, because you have the presence of hydrogen or hydronium combining with hydroxide to make water. That's essentially the balanced ionic equation for all of those. So for exercise five, we have write the complete balanced molecular and net ionic equations for. Okay, first one is the react reaction of sulfuric acid. So that's H2SO4 with potassium hydroxide. So that's KOH. The first thing we have to look for is, are both of these strong acids and, or strong bases? And in this case, the answer is yes. All right, and it also says, assume that both of the hydrogen ions from the acid are used in the reaction. So that's actually unusual, but we'll go for it for now. So we have H2SO4 plus KOH. And again, we assume these are aqueous solutions and therefore we have two compounds, treat it like a double replacement. So now potassium pairs with sulfate. Potassium is a plus one, sulfate's a minus two, so K2SO4. And H and OH, which is the same thing as water. All right, now we need to look at solubilities here. Sulfates are generally fairly soluble, especially considering this is paired with a group one ion, so I'm gonna call that aqueous. And then water can be a, a solid, a liquid, or a gas. So in this case, we're probably talking about the liquid form. Now to create a net ionic equation, we have to use a total ionic first. So let's split this up. Sulfuric acid has two hydrogen ions and a sulfate ion. Potassium hydroxide, oops, I forgot to balance this, excuse me. We need a two in front of that KOH and a two in front of that water. So try that again, two potassium ions and two hydroxide ions. And that breaks down or becomes two potassium ions plus a sulfate ion and liquid stays together, so two water. 
All right, now we can go through and cancel out our spectator ions. So in that case, in this particular case, we have sulfate and we have potassium. And that leaves us with 2H plus plus 2OH minus yields 2H2O liquid. All right, our second reaction is going to be a little bit trickier, okay, because we have the reaction of ammonia with hydrochloric acid. Ammonia is NH3. It is aqueous. And then we have HCl, which is also aqueous. In this case, you really can't just switch around. What actually happens with this is you end up with really several steps happening here. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show it to you a couple of different ways. The first way is that these two can combine to make ammonium chloride, which in this case would be aqueous. And since all of those are aqueous, we don't even really count that as a reaction. Another thing that can happen is that when you put ammonia into water, it actually becomes ammonium hydroxide. Notice there's two more H's and an O, so it's like you kind of combine the water with it. So if we treat it as um, aqueous ammonium hydroxide plus HCl, then it's a lot easier to see that it still acts like a double replacement reaction. So you have your H and OH pair up, which is your water. And then you have ammonium and chloride. All right, HCl is aqueous, ammonium chloride is aqueous, water is a liquid. So by treating ammonia like ammonium hydroxide, and we essentially use them interchangeably, it's a lot easier to see what the net reaction is going to be. So if we break it up, we have NH4 plus, plus OH minus, plus H plus, plus Cl minus, yields H2O liquid, plus NH4 plus, plus Cl minus. Again, we can cancel out our spectators, so that gets rid of ammonium. OH and H have to stay because they're making water, and chloride. So we have H plus, plus OH minus, yields H2O liquid.